Being a North Carolina guy, watching TBS and seeing all these guys play, Andrew Jones, Chipper, Raphael for a call. I've always wanted to be a Brave at some point in my career. It's a treat to be in Atlanta and, and to wear that Braves jersey. Whit Merrifield joining us from the Phillies to the Braves. First time we have you on since traded. Whit, what's going on, man? How's the last few weeks been? Uh, crazy. Yeah, a little crazy. Um, sort of like getting traded, but in a kind of a less cool sense. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I mean, it's just been a little hectic, but um, kind of getting settled in here in Atlanta and uh, enjoying my time. Can you Can you go like this for me? Uh-oh. Where's the finger? That good. Oh, uh, dude, that's nothing, bro, compared to what Rowdy feeling. did. Like, Rowdy, like, cut his finger off last year. You want me to send you a picture of how it was about a week ago? I mean, could you gnarly. play through it? Could you play through it? I, I tried. I, I really tried to get them to let me play through it, um, but I couldn't. I had four stitches. You can kind of see the holes, but I had four stitches going through my nail. Uh, Ooh into like this top part of my finger and um it was really hard to get anything like on a throw so i was really throwing kind of change ups off the bottom of my finger uh hitting was okay um but i couldn't i, I really couldn't get anything on a throw um but playing second base i was trying to talk him into like when do you really have to let one eat from second base um but they they weren't they weren't buying it but i did i did um talk him into keeping me off the il so i was pretty pumped about that but yeah, it was pretty gnarly, but it's healing nicely. I just don't have very much feel in the tip of my finger, but no, it's still doing pretty good. Was that your first? Was that your first ground ball you took as a Brave? It was the it, we were taking ground balls or like doing early work. Um, I just got there. I had just been in the car for five hours, so I want to get on the field and do something. And it was the last ball I was taking uh, before uh, we went inside and did BP and everything. So yeah, it was it was a bummer, but. Um, it wasn't too terribly long. Did you, did, the, did you see? No, did you see Snit's comments about you when you when it happened? No, I didn't. What did he say? Oh, uh, he's like, of course, we bring a new guy in and he gets hurt before he even does anything. He's like, <laughs> this year's been unbelievable for the Braves. Yeah, kind of one of those things. I've been playing. This is my ninth year, and I've never even never been on the IL. Never even had to uh, be scratched from a game. Um, so yeah, it's just kind of one of those things going around the team right now and hopefully that it's it ended with this when I was in uh Philly talking to uh Trey Turner and when he was in Washington I asked him what was wrong with his finger one day and it was the same finger and it was it's all like jacked up and he said that uh he broke it and ended up playing through it anyway long story short he said he had to sacrifice you have to sacrifice a finger to win the World Series. So hopefully this is the finger <laughs> they have to sacrifice to win the World Series. There you go. Hey, by the way, Mark Tian, you remember Mark Tian? He's a royal legend. Yeah. yeah. He did that, and he, but he broke his middle finger. This, but he, he did the same thing. Like he was feeling the ground ball, came up, hit him on the middle finger. He broke it. He missed like two months with a broken – I mean, the yeah. same thing. It was it was, it was was crazy. Yeah, well, it was, I mean, it, feel, it felt like – if you're, if you're an infielder, you get bad hops and it hits you in the fingers and really didn't feel like anything different. Um, and really, it was my pointer finger that I was worried about because it was the one I kind of looked down and it's still a little bit, it still bothered me a little bit, but um, it was the one that really hurt. Just the, this finger wouldn't stop bleeding and um, x-rays came back good and then uh, we didn't think much of it and then it wouldn't stop. So we went to the hand doctor and he said that when it hit, I guess it pulled the nail back and then like the seam, I guess, caught the skin underneath the nail and just shredded it. And so they had to, they had to fix it. Oof. Well, it's not you, dude. It, it's no, it's not fun. It's just like some Atlanta vibe thing going on this year. But even still, teams in playoff contention, obviously. So let's go even further back than when you get picked up by the team. What about in the off season? So we had you on after you signed, right? Probably like a week after you signed, you're with Philly. And we asked you about other teams that were interested and you were, you, you kind of hinted that there was another team in the division. Maybe they were, you know, kind of closer to home. Was, was this one of those teams that was at least interested or you had a conversation with in the off season? And of course you ended up signing with Philly. No, Atlanta was never, never really in, um, in the off season. It just didn't, 
I, did, I didn't fit their the roster the way they had envisioned it going into the season. But obviously things happen throughout the course of the year, and it's uh, it's a much better fit now. Are you excited about it? Because this is a team that, you know, you've had circled on your list. Obviously, you know, you played in KC, you had a great run there. You were coming from Toronto. Philly was a fun vibe, but Atlanta's had a lot of winning for a while. Yeah, I mean, being a, being a North Carolina guy, it's uh, it's an honor to, to wear that, that tomahawk chop on, on my on my chest. Um, growing up watching watching TBS and seeing all these guys play, um, Andrew Jones, Chipper, Raphael Furcal, those were my those were my favorite guys and um, <clears throat> AJ Przinsky. <clears throat> um, uh, let's see, Javi Lopez. Yeah, uh, he was my he's my Wait. favorite bridge catcher. Uh, where were uh, you? You better tell Eddie Perez his mustache was your favorite. Well, he won't we'll throw you good BP. Yeah, yeah, he does throw good BP. Um, but no, it's it's just it's an honor to be a Brave, and, and uh, I've always wanted to be a Brave at some point in my career, and. Um, it's it's just uh, it's a treat to be in Atlanta and, and to wear that Braves jersey. Can you bring any trade secrets over to Atlanta? I mean, I know you had fun with Philly, but it's a big division rival. Like, is that a thing where, you know, if you guys face them again, I don't know if you have them the rest of the regular season, but even in the playoffs, if they're like, hey, what do you have on, you know, starter X, Y, Z or anything else that would be helpful? Do teams do that in baseball? I, I mean, yeah, like – you know, be, be, if you're on the team, you're going to have be more familiar, um, you know, with, with certain guys. So I would just call it like a little bit more of an advanced scouting report, I guess. Um, I mean, there's no, like, we don't run plays so that you can't like steal like their signs and tell them when a run's coming or when a pass is coming. So like, there's really nothing like, like that, that happens in baseball. Um, especially now with the pitch com and guys, you know, we don't like people don't hit run anymore or really bunt. So uh, you pretty much just go out, go out and play. So the best I can do is uh, tell them, you know, Wheeler's got a really good two seamer and, uh, and Nola's got a great curveball. ball. has got a good change up. So nothing that they don't already know. Um, but yeah, that's, that's, that's all I got really. I mean, listen, back in the day when, you know, we, we had guys get moved, you know, you had to change everything because you had to change signs. So when, I remember when I was with the Twins, Tom Kelly was paranoid about when guys that were on our team at one point in the year got went to a different team. So he would have a pitcher sit down at the end of the dugout, and he would give the signs by like how he held his arms. So the third base coach would mean nothing, and you'd look and like you're looking at the third base coach, you're like, but you're really looking at the pitcher that was behind him, and he would call the signs like with the way he sat or if he like took his hat off or whatever. Yeah. Was, don't don't mind that hair, by the way. Um, but yeah, so yeah, I mean, so yeah, it's changed because like you could. I mean, I guess you could do like the first and thirds, but even those are on the pitch com now, right? Everything is on pitch com. Yeah, for the most part, yeah. First and thirds is probably the one thing that is, uh, I don't know, the most the most used as far as you know when we're, when are we throw one to second, when are we redirect and when are we throw a third, when are we not throwing at all. So uh, that's probably the most beneficial, uh, I guess, thing that you could bring, um, but. It, there's really, there's really not, not much being over there that I could bring uh, to a new team to like gain a big advantage. So it's just the way baseball works. Hey, listen, when, in 2014 when the Red Sox DFA'd me and I went to the Cardinals, and we played them like a week later, we still gave signs. I was like, here's everything, boys. I'll give you every <laughs> sign, every – the pitchers, I know all their pitches, what signs they like to use with guys on second. I'm like, I'll give you, what do y'all want to know? I'll give you guys everything. Scouting reports, what they like to talk about in their meetings. I'm like, here you go, boys. But yeah, like you said, it's different now. Big shout out to America's number one meal kit, HelloFresh, for helping us eat good during this busy time of the year for us. With HelloFresh, you get pre-portioned ingredients and seasonal recipes delivered right to your doorstep. It's home cooking made easy, fun, and affordable. HelloFresh makes it easy, even for picky eaters like Scott. There's a changing menu of 50 recipes to choose from each week. Customize it to fit your taste. There's protein and veggie swap options too. The recipes are easy to follow. Just choose your delivery day, open your box, cook, and eat. My house is busy with sports, but family dinners are important. My fam eats better, healthier, and we cook so much easier with HelloFresh. And for a limited time, kids eat free. Go to HelloFresh.com slash FTKids to unlock this exclusive offer. One free kid's meal per box for two months while subscription is active. That's free kids meals just by going to HelloFresh 
dot com slash F T kids. Bryce Harper recruited you to Philly. He was one of the main guys in your corner. Did he say anything to you before you left? We, yeah, we had a nice conversation. Um, I told, I told everybody, um, by it happened that they, they, uh, released me, um, when, when I got to the field, um, uh, for the next game on, I guess it was Friday. Uh, so I had time to, yeah, it wasn't like, I wasn't, you know, it, it's just part of it. So, uh, I stuck around and made sure I, I saw everybody and, um, and, and said goodbye. And, uh, Bryce actually was late a little bit later getting there. I think his kids had something to do that afternoon. So he was a little bit later showing. So I'd already left, but, uh, he called me, uh, when he got to the field and, and found out and, uh, we had a nice conversation. So, I look. I, I love my time in Philly. I really did. Like that's such a great group of guys. Um, the front from the staff, the front office. Like they all. They're, they're just a top notch organization. Um, I hate it didn't go better than it did. Like, in in from my uh, from my point of view, um, you know, I just when I whenever I did get a chance to play, I just didn't make the most of it um, for whatever reason. It just seemed like it. As much of a as much as it felt like a good fit going into the year. Um, from a playing perspective, it just didn't didn't end up being a good fit, uh, which is a bummer because I really did enjoy my time there. But uh, yeah, it's it's uh, it, it was a hard it was a hard thing to leave. Uh, just just it was hard leaving those guys. I really enjoyed my time with those guys and getting to know those guys, and even for the short amount of time I was there, uh, developed some great great friendship, uh, great chemistry with those guys, and uh, wished about them but the best. I told them I wished them a little bit less. I guess than the best now, um, but you know I'm always I'm always cheering for those guys. Just just not quite as hard anymore. Hey, listen, I get it because uh, like I said, when I was DFA or released in 2014, the Red Sox, they called me in like seven in the morning. Like, hey, can you come in at like nine o'clock, uh, yeah. Charrington? And, and and I'm like, uh, the game's at seven. Why do you need me there? Am I getting let go? <laughs> and they're like, we just need you to come in. And I was like. <laughs> okay yeah so yeah oh listen trust me i i feel your pain on this and listen i love my time with the red sox the organization was great there were some people obviously you know you don't i didn't get along with it or were there but you know the 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 organization was great it's just bittersweet right you go there you sign there as a free agent and you think man this is going to be great i'm playing for the phillies they're a world series contender you know we got bryce harper we got schwerber we got castellanos let's go and listen i give you nothing but credit or when you were on last time, and this is right before it happened, you said, I got two months, three months left, and I'm going to show them what it's really like. So now you have a chance to go to Atlanta, and you can show them what it's really like. Yeah, I'd love to get hot. Uh, that, that'd be nice. I felt like I've gotten, I haven't gotten hot all year, really. I haven't even really gotten warm. So uh, I'd like to kind of kick it into gear. I'm playing every day now, so it's, um, you know, hopefully I can I can use that and, and, and sort of start feeling some some more game reps and and kind of getting my groove back and um but yeah you know we'll see baseball's a tough game and uh just need just needed to click once it once it clicks i feel like we can we can kind of get back in, in the gear it's just a matter of finding that thought or that whatever it is uh to to kind of click and get back to what i was doing uh last year hey wait do you sense you know a different level of urgency with the team at this point, sometimes they've kind of cruised through the NL East. Not always. I mean, when they won the World Series, they were only in the 500 range in mid-August, and we know how you know the torn. It becomes a tournament in October sometimes. But you know, I know you haven't been there for a ton of time yet. If, if you you know made friends with certain guys to kind of learn about how their season is going, and can you look at some positives? Like I know Braves fans are really down because they've been spoiled. They've gotten the World Series in the past decade. They've They've racked up a ton of division titles. I've been kind of putting my thoughts out there on the fact that there's a lot of wild card teams that end up going to the World Series. So you got to look at talent and what can carry, you know, during a playoff series and how, I mean, there's certainly plenty there for them to be able to do that. You got to get in because it's going to be a tough wild card race or if you guys can catch Philly. But what do you think? What are you hearing there? It's just a, this is just a really confident group. Uh, there's no panic in this group. Um, they bid. They've been there. They know what it's like. They know what it takes, uh, and they know it's they know what a baseball season looks like, and and the ebbs and flows of a baseball season, and uh, with the talent that's in that clubhouse, um, guys that that haven't even uh, really kind of hit their stride. We have, collectively have not hit our stride. Um, 
So it's uh, there, there's just a there's a quiet confidence in, in the clubhouse, which is what you need. Um, and uh, I know as most common uh, baseball fans kind of let the ebbs and flows uh, play with their emotions. Um, and that just if if you as a player, if you kind of buy into that, it makes for uh, a long season, and you're not going to get the best out, out of yourself and your team. Um, so there's there's a quiet confidence that that we're gonna we're gonna get done what we need to get done. Um, and uh, you know you can call it urgency, but I wouldn't say I don't know if urgency is the right word. But guys are coming in every day and and, and trying to improve on on the day before, and um, we keep doing that. And what we got like um. Just under two months left, uh, we'll be we'll be where we need to be. All right, well, before we let you go, I got to ask you this question: okay. Could you beat the freeze in a race? That's it. Could you beat the freeze? Uh, with that the head start that he gets, he gets yeah, everybody? just like they do it, just like they do it. Yeah, I think I could. No okay. doubt. If he gave me we, if he gave if he gave me the head start, I think I think I could get him. I don't know. That's a long way, though. I don't know. If, <laughs> see, yeah. see, it's like it's like a triple or inside the Parker. You'd be, you'd be, you know, you'd be gassed at the end. Yeah, I want to say I can, but if uh, if it was uh, if I if I knocked the head start down a little bit and we just ran to like right center, I think I got him. Okay, but that that extra that extra was it like twenty yards? That, that that could be the difference. That's where everybody dies. That's where everybody runs out of gas at last 20 yeah. yards. They're, they, they're like, oh, I got him. I got him. And then it's like hamstring goes, back goes, and then they're like, oh, there it goes the freeze right by you. It is, it's impressive to see live. It is impressive to see live. He's, he's striding out there. That's why it became such a big deal. Remember the first time he raced the dude who thought he had him, and then he tripped at you know kind of the finish line, and, and he passed him? Like That was such a classic clip, and – that's how it became such a big deal. But anyway, well, enjoy it, dude. Good to see you out there and back on the mound with a, you know, or back on the field with a normal finger again. So uh, keep it intact and we'll catch you yeah. again in a few weeks. All right, dude. All right. See you guys. I'm going to send you all a picture of what it looked like. And please. Right. Yeah. AJ yes, needs please it. About that lunch. I love that stuff. I love that. I love seeing phones <laughs> and stuff. It's yeah. awesome. Hey, everybody. Be sure to like and subscribe for more content. We're back here every weekday, all year long, so do not miss an episode. The videos are coming in all day. Here's another video you might enjoy. Baseball the way it should be covered.